Remember the old blind date? It's being tried just as much today as it ever was. Say, Jack, my beautiful cousin Charlotte is in town. She arrived unexpectedly, and she's willing to go to the Saturday night drag with any lucky fellow who appreciates the tops and feminine poker dude. You should see those eyes, those lips, and those curves. Oh, man. Yeah, I suppose your cousin's something like Jenny or Marilyn Monroe. She's even better than that. Better count me out. I've been on blind dates before. Nine times out of ten, I've wasted an entire evening. Yes, that's the way with blind dates. And the same reasoning applies to automobiles. Would anyone expect to buy on verbal description alone? To buy on a blind date, so to speak? Unlike the unfortunate boy who only wastes an evening, a prospect may have to live with his blind date car for a long time and risk a large investment. He should be extra shy of a blind date. How do you avoid making blind dates? By the simple act of letting the prospect know what he's getting by demonstrating the car to him. All automobile manufacturers are placing more emphasis on getting the public to try a ride in their cars. As a result, more and more prospects expect demonstrations before they buy. Packard salesmen especially can welcome this return to the golden era of the demonstration with expectations of greater than ever commissions. For your Packard car is a convincingly dramatic tool when it comes to clinching a sale. Pound for pound, it's just about the most automobile that was ever packed into its size. This convincing fact becomes more and more obvious to prospects when you demonstrate. Of course, in any demonstration, there are certain things to be done. Features to show and demonstrate. Let's watch Paul Monroe, Packard salesman. He's on his way to make a demonstration. Paul, by appointment, is contacting this prospect, Mr. Fisher, for the second time. Fisher, in a hurry yesterday, had stopped in at the showroom. Paul is following up fast with a demonstration. We're all set for that demonstration ride I promised you yesterday, Mr. Fisher. Well, that car had better be pretty good to live up to everything you said about it. Oh, it is, Mr. Fisher. That's why I want you to drive it. As you can see, in a Packard, you have the most outstanding styling and beauty of any car on the road. It's distinctively different from any other. Packard's low silhouette actually provides greater interior headroom and higher, more comfortable seats than many other cars which stand considerably higher from the road. Here you can see the generous size of this Packard, which provides for your complete interior comfort and room, and the expanse of the luggage compartment, which has no equal. It's a good-looking car, but I haven't found a truck yet that would hold all of my hunting equipment. If anyone can, Packard's carload luggage compartment will. Say, this is big. It's the largest you'll find. Paul continues his pre-demonstration selling by calling attention to the interior appointments and smart trim, to the wide opening doors, to the unusual ease with which passengers can enter or leave a packet. He adjusts the front seat to suit the prospect and points up the superior amount of adjustment to accommodate short or tall people for safe, comfortable driving. Then with the prospect at the wheel, Paul shows him Packard's close-up view of the road ahead, the guideline fenders which act as safety sentinels in judging side clearance, the exceptional all-around visibility. And now, Mr. Fisher, I'd like you to experience the easiest, smoothest, most economical form of automatic driving in the motor car world, Packard Ultramatic Drive. For safety's sake, the engine can only be started when the selector is set to neutral, or park. That's right. Explain the safety starting feature. But remember, the purpose of Ultramatic is to simplify driving, so keep the explanation simple. Show how easy it is to start and stop, then start out again. Call attention to the fact that driving is reduced to merely stepping on the accelerator or brake as you guide the car. To guard against a tire screeching stop, Mention the light touch required with Packard's ease braking. 
explain the increased safety and additional driving ease made possible by this great development. Now that you've shown the prospect how to start and stop, let him drive and become familiar with the feel, riding qualities, and responsiveness of the Packard car. Invite the prospect to feel the instant response to accelerator pressure in direct drive. Point out particularly the absence of slippage in engine roar. Explain in simple language that you start smoothly with a torque converter, that you cruise with spirited performance and economy in Ultramatic's exclusive direct drive. Have the prospect push the accelerator to the floor to experience the terrific torque converter performance for passing. Let him feel how with the pressure of his toe on the accelerator, he can boss Ultramatic to be in either torque converter or direct drive as he desires. Let him see how easy it is to hold the car on a grade by applying light accelerator pressure. Point out the freedom from engine stalling which is common in a situation like this. Show how easy it is to negotiate hills in direct drive or at a crawl with a torque converter. Demonstrate the terrific reserve pulling power with Ultramatic set to low. Call attention to the positive safety locking of the rear wheels when Ultramatic is set to the parked position. When you've covered Ultramatic, invite the prospect to turn the car around or park it to see how marvelously Packard's power steering further takes the work out of driving. Say, I never realized driving could be such a pleasure. It's an experience you can enjoy for miles, for years, in your Packard car. Packard power steering gives an entirely new, secure sense of control, even on a rough road or on the open road at high speed. Don't you agree, Mr. Fisher? Yes, that's so. It's an unusual car. These power brakes work like a charm, too. It's a mighty nice car. Incidentally, this is the first time I've had a chance to see what a Packard could do. If I buy, I'll know what I'm getting. Mr. Fisher means he won't be buying a blind date. Yes, that's the kind of enthusiasm you'll find after a planned demonstration. A planned demonstration is far more than just a ride in a car. Everything from the condition of the car itself to the exact route to be covered must be prepared must be planned in advance. For instance, your demonstrator must be spotlessly clean, inside and out. It must be in perfect mechanical shape and adjustment to show off Packard at its best. If possible, your demonstration route should include a lightly traveled street with stop and go driving, some hills, a rough road, and a highway. If you're located in the mountains or out in the Great Plains, Naturally, you'll adapt your demonstration to local conditions. However, while there should be a basic plan for every demonstration, each demonstration must be tailored to meet the particular prospect's known interests. How do you discover their interests? Many times you can learn a lot simply by listening. These prospects are the Morrisons, looking at Packard for the first time. Mr. Monroe, We've seen the Packard advertising, so we stopped in to see if a Packard would be within our means. Paul asks a few friendly questions to discover the make and model of their present car, how much they can afford to budget for a Packard, and how the new Packard will be used. You'll find a wonderful new Packard car well within your means. But rather than tell you about it, I want you to drive it and discover the world of difference between Packard and other cars. Yes, Paul is going to demonstrate to the Morrisons, but how is he going to demonstrate? Which model will he sell? What features will he stress? The Morrisons are budget conscious. I'll concentrate on my 200 Deluxe. At the close, I can step them up to a 300 or, if necessary, come down to the 200. For that budget consciousness, there's Packard's long-term economy and high trade-in value. And with youngsters, Safety will be a big feature for the Morrisons. Yes, Paul's planning his demonstration technique. He calls attention to Packard's distinctive styling and gives the Morrisons ample time to appreciate the beauty of its lines. 
While Paul again makes a complete presentation, such as we've seen earlier, he now places the emphasis on the features which suit this particular prospect's interests. As an example, he emphasizes the beautiful interior appointments and smart trim, which are of more interest to a woman. He stresses safety throughout the demonstration, the child-proof safety locking of the rear doors, greater visibility, better roadability and braking, the solid steel body, and so on. Since he is selling a family car, Paul lets Mrs. Morrison drive on the way back to the showroom. He knows that she, too, must be sold. He takes this opportunity, as all good salesmen do, to summarize the features he believes will clinch the sale. You can feel Packard's superior safety in its stability on the road. It's faster, more positive braking. The solid, secure protection of the solid steel body. You can see the greater safety in Packard's horizon view visibility and guideline safety fenders, with each feature providing for your greater protection. While Packard's initial cost is just a little more than a low-priced car, Packard cars are built to last. Therefore, maintenance cost is low. According to the latest used car prices, Packard resale value is above that of any car in its class. It's your guarantee of most value for your money. Don't you think it's a wonderful car, Mrs. Morrison? I like it. It's an exceptional car. When we get back to your office, let's see what kind of a deal you can work out. Yes, driving the car and getting to know it at first hand beats any sales talk in downright effectiveness, no matter how good the talk is. But a showroom presentation and the planned demonstration go hand in hand. The demonstration is the follow-up clincher on the sale and should be made at every opportunity. There's a million dollars of persuasiveness packed into this beauty that's eager to help Packard salesmen make more sales and more money. Just place the prospect inside and expose him well to the host of features he will find. Of course, in a planned demonstration, your route exposes the prospect to the Packard features in a logical order. For instance, it's not good technique to start a demonstration by plunging a prospect over a rough road or into a demonstration of high speed. And of course, some prospects aren't interested in rough roads or speed at all. That's so right. I came across that type of prospect just the other day. I demonstrated a patrician 400 to the Leonards. Good judgment would indicate that they were not interested in high top speed or flashing getaway. Rather, they fell in love with the regal distinctiveness of the patrician. I also pointed out the luxury, room, and comfort of the interior. Throughout the demonstration, I emphasized Packard's complete comfort and its supreme driving ease. The combination of Ultramatic Drive, Easomatic Braking, and Packard's Power Steering are features that can be felt, instantly appreciated, and demonstrated to the utmost. Mr. Leonard got a big kick out of the Power Steering feature and tried it at every opportunity. I, of course, encouraged this and explained how it took the work out of parking. I continued telling how Power Steering banished wheel fight and made a full day's driving possible without steering fatigue. Best of all, Mr. Leonard could feel the truth of this in the driving. While we didn't make any speed runs, Mr. Leonard drove the 400 on the highway, and, of course, I mentioned the superlative Thunderbolt reserve power, which makes the car capable of 100 miles an hour performance. As contrasted to the Leonard's, there was Horton Miller, well-known bachelor about town, polo player, yachtsman. He's the type that would volunteer for a rocket trip to the moon. With Horton, everything had to be the latest style, the greatest, the fastest. You can imagine how I demonstrated to him. However, even Horton was impressed with Packard's rakish, exciting styling. It's distinctiveness which sets Packard apart from the many look-alike cars. Seated at the wheel of this luxurious car, I called his attention to the host of handsome appointments and conveniences which surrounded him. This car was half sold before the actual demonstration. I showed how for a super takeoff, Ultramatic could be set to low, then into high. 
And Mr. Miller had discovered a new performance thrill. He didn't wait for an invitation to prove to himself that Packard is an honest hundred mile an hour motor car. He took to the power steering and braking like a duck to water. He had quite a knowledge about engines. So I mentioned the important Packard Thunderbolt features as regards performance, efficiency, and durability. By discovering his interest and then emphasizing those features, the car practically sold itself. Yes, emphasizing and playing up to a prospect's known interest is a vital ingredient which determines the effectiveness of a well-planned demonstration. Chances are that Mr. Miller could not be sold the 400 based on comfort and driving ease. Nor would the Leonards buy the convertible with all of its speed and style. So for demonstrations that hit the targets and pay off where it really counts, plan your presentation in advance. Know the features you will emphasize in each particular demonstration. Plan your demonstration route to bring out these features to the utmost. Keep your demonstrator in perfect shape. Does it pay off? Well, just take a look at Mr. Fisher now. He's demonstrating his new Packard to his friends. Does that answer the question? <laughs>